seems to be spilling over. In the latest, Moscow was warned of targeting British territories if Ukraine deploys UK's weapons to strike Russia. This as per the Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova. Our next report tells you more. In the face of the relentless Russian onslaught, the outnumbered and outgunned Ukrainian troops are retreating, giving up more villages. At least seven people have been killed in the latest attack on the eastern Ukrainian city of Kharkiv. Ukrainian President Zelensky again asserts that Russia is leveraging his country's lack of air defense systems to launch brutal strikes on frontline towns and cities. Beyond the battlefield, pressure is growing on US President Joe Biden to allow Ukraine to fire American missiles into Russian territory. The US House Speaker has told Voice of America that Ukraine needs to be able to fight back. He said the US micromanaging the Ukraine effort is not a good policy for Kyiv. Ukraine has appealed to the Biden administration to lift the ban. Kyiv is not alone in this demand. Lithuania, which is a NATO ally and shares a border with Russia, wants Ukraine to strike Russian territory, disrupt supply lines and neutralize enemy forces. Finland had said earlier that Ukraine can use weapons provided by Helsinki to hit targets on Russian soil. Remember, till now, Western weapons have come with a condition. They should be used by Ukraine to hit Russian targets on its territory in defense. But the present change in tone could have wide-ranging ramifications. Earlier this month, UK virtually greenlit Kyiv to use its weapons as they deem fit. The big question is, if Ukraine is allowed to hit Russian targets, how will Moscow react? Kremlin warns it will strike British targets if British weapons are used by Ukraine on Russian territory. The signs are ominous. A small miscalculation can spark a wider conflict beyond the Ukraine borders. Bureau Report, Beyond World is One. Well, for more on this, we're being joined by Scott Lucas, who's a professor of international politics at the Clinton Institute at the University College Dublin. And he's joining us live from Birmingham. Scott, many thanks for your time this morning. It appears like we're potentially approaching a turning point in this war with the use of foreign state weapons and the ability of Ukraine to launch attacks into Russia. Just give us your assessment on that and also perhaps on what we can expect in this war over the coming weeks and months? Let me start, Oliver, by saying clearly and simply that when the Kremlin says it could hit British targets beyond Ukraine, it's bluffing. It is bluffing because the first time that Russia attacks um, a UK target, it will bring in all of the UK's NATO allies in its defense. Uh, NATO, of course, has not put soldiers directly in Ukraine uh, officially. Uh, NATO is not directly involved in the war against Russia, but if the Kremlin was to strike the UK, it would be. So why is Russia bluffing? Russia's bluffing not because it's winning, but because it is worried. It is worried because Ukraine is already using uh, British supplied Storm Shadow long range missiles. Those missiles are being used to attack Russian military positions and oil installations in Crimea. Uh, they have been instrumental in helping Ukraine destroy up to one third of uh, Russia's Black Sea Fleet. And those Storm Shadow missiles, as well as French missiles, are probably being used inside Russia, causing further damage to the Russian position. And Russia is worried now that the United States might lift its own public ban on Ukraine using long range American ATACMS missiles inside Russia. Uh, Russia launched its latest gamble by attacking across the border into Kharkiv in northeast Ukraine. It has only gained a small amount of territory. The price it may pay is increasing attacks on Russia because of these missiles from the US, France, and the UK. And Vladimir Putin is worried. Okay, and that's very clear that 
Scott. But what about the prospects of this war over the coming weeks and months? Do you do you anticipate anything changing, or are we going to remain in this kind of stalemate with small gains and and very little progress on each side? Or do you anticipate that this year could see something decisive in terms of the outcome of this war? Oliver, I think I, I stand by the assessment I have for some time that this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, Ukraine's counteroffensive in 2023 in the east and in the south of the country achieved only limited gains because of Russian defenses. Russia was able to seize the initiative in 2024 because of a blockade on U.S. military aid for six and a half months by Trumpist and hard-right Republicans. But Russia, despite throwing so many personnel into the attacks in the east and the northeast, despite suffering tens of thousands of casualties, despite all the headlines you read, have only regained one town in the Donetsk region. That's the town of Adivka, as well as some villages. And so far in Kharkiv, in two weeks, they have taken about 12 villages, but they're still struggling to take even a single town, the town of Vochansk. So I think the front line doesn't move very much. But this isn't just a war about the front lines. It's a war behind the front lines. So I think you have to talk, for example, about the economic contest. Uh, and with Ukraine now receiving guarantees of billions of euros from the European Union, as well as assistance from the United States, I think that is significant. I think Russia still faces the challenge of running a wartime economy. And I think the prospect of U.S. military aid now arriving on the front lines and also being used in attacks beyond the front lines, that also changes the situation. I think the one last hope for Vladimir Putin is a propaganda war. That is to tell people in India, to tell people where I am in Ireland, to tell them in Europe, in Asia, in the US, oh, just, just go away. Just concentrate on what's happening in your own countries. Let me take care of Ukraine. But unless that propaganda war works, then Ukraine still can count on support against this 27-month invasion. And Vladimir Putin's hope then is that a guy named Donald Trump gets into the White House and finally pulls the U.S. away from Kiev. Scott Lucas, Professor of International Politics at the Clinton Institute at the University College Dublin. Many thanks there for that detailed insight. Thank you.